Hi everyone, welcome to today's post-op diet webinar. Um, before we do get started, I do just want to introduce myself. My name is Christina and I'm a nutritionist here at Mexico Arian Food Center. Um, I got my bachelor's degree um, in nutrition at UC Davis here in California and I've been working at NBC for almost a whole year. Um, my contact info is on the screen. Um, it's just nutrition at mexicobariatricscenter.com for my email, and my direct line is also on the screen. Um, it will be up later if you don't get a chance to screenshot or take a picture of it now. For any questions that you might have about uh, medications or um, any kind of medical questions, please reach out to our surgeon liaison. She's a doctor, and she's best equipped to answer all of your questions about things like this. Her contact info is on the screen. Um, you can either take a screenshot or a picture of it. Um, so today's post-op diet webinar is going to be um, in three parts. So part one is going to be the four phases of the post-op diet. Part two is going to be nutrition goals. And part three will be about vitamins. So let's just jump right into it. So after surgery, um, your first phase is going to be clear liquids. This is the same clear liquid um, as the two days before surgery. So this kind of just allows your stomach uh, time to rest. Um, and the goal here is to intake 64 ounces of fluids with a minimum of 48 to prevent dehydration. And you will be on this diet for five to seven days after your rest. And your liquid is usually the day after surgery. So it's five to seven days after that. On clear liquids, it's really important to sip slowly um, and sip fluids throughout your whole day. You want to limit your intake to about one teaspoon of liquid at a time and wait 60 seconds between each, each sip of liquid. Um, and you want to sip for a minimum of four ounces um, or sip a minimum of four ounces per hour. In the beginning, it is common for water to irritate your stomach glucose, so I highly recommend trying out different temperatures of your fluids. Um, sometimes water and colder liquids can do better in your stomach than just room temperature fluids. Um, and fluids do not harm or stretch your pouch, so just be sure to continue sipping, sip as much as you can. Um, and liquids do pass through your system without restriction, so if you don't feel any restriction, that's completely normal. Um, and some things you can have on clear liquids um, are decaf tea, fruit juices. They do need to be 100% real juice that you dilute with water, 60% water, 40% juice. You can also have infused water, um, just water that you can add some lemon into or maybe even um, like some mint or berries just to give it a little bit of flavor. You can also have different kinds of broth. You can also have clear protein waters like Premier Clear, Protein 2O, um, Isopure. Um, you can also have sugar free jello and sugar free popsicles. And you can also have um, some things to avoid are acidic teas like black tea, lemon tea, tea um, anything that you know, like um, it's just too acidic, it can cause you some acid reflux and some discomfort. You also want to avoid any coffee or citrus juices, um, as well as anything carbonated. And here are some of those samples, um, like the broth, the crystallite, the coke. Um, if you're going to have coconut water, it should be nice coconut water. You can also have protein waters, um, sugar-free liquids, and broth. You can also take unflavored um, protein powder and you can add it into your clear liquids to kind of make your own protein waters. Um, also just for some added nutritional benefit. Then you'll move on to phase two, which is thick liquid. So this begins five to seven days after surgery um, and it'll last for about a week. And the goal in this phase is to get 60 to 90 grams of protein, but you should also be getting 64 ounces of fluids a day. Um, and the reason why we have to focus on protein starting this early is because protein aids in proper wound healing after surgery and um, ensures that your body isn't using your muscle um, for weight loss, but it's burning fat. Um, 
And then at the end of this phase, at 14 days post-op, you will begin your making your measurements. So all of your liquids on this phase should be thin enough to go through a straw, but you shouldn't actually need a straw. And some things you can have are blended soups. Just make sure they're blended really well where there's no chunks in them. You can also have homemade smoothies. You can also have protein shakes and powders, um, as well as fruit and vegetable purees. Um, plant milk, like unsweetened almond milk or unsweetened coconut milk. You can also have thinned refried beans or um, pureed beans and lentils. You can use some of your broth to kind of thin it out. You can also have oatmeal. Um, it should be pretty thin. I recommend just kind of even putting it through a blender just to make sure there's no um, large chunks in there. Some things to avoid are high sugar flavored yogurts, um, ice cream, smoothies from cake store restaurants, store-bought baby food. Uh, that one doesn't have enough uh, nutrition for an adult and also doesn't have, it usually does have a lot of sugar, so that's why we have to avoid baby food. And you do want to avoid carbonated beverages um, just because that extra gas can cause you pain and discomfort um, after surgery. And thick liquids are considered meals, so you should be waiting the 30-minute rule um, or following the 30-minute rule with them where you're not drinking 30 minutes before having your thick liquids and you're not drinking until 30 minutes after having your thick liquid. And here are some recipes that you can take a picture of, a screenshot of. Um, some little tips on thick liquids. Um, you can add an unflavored protein powder to all your thick liquids to kind of give them some extra protein. You can also use your protein shake to make your oatmeal, um, to give your plant oatmeal some kind of flavor as well as protein. Um, and now we will do a poll question um, to check your knowledge. So after surgery, how much of the food should you include clear liquid? And this poll is only available on Zoom. Not okay, we'll give you a few more seconds um, and I'll end the poll. Okay, um, so here are those results. 88% said 48 ounces, someone said 75 ounces, someone said 21. Uh, the goal is 64 ounces, but the minimum is 48 to prevent dehydration. Okay, now for our next question. Fluids will stretch your stomach, true or false? Okay, just a few more seconds. So a majority said false, which is the correct answer. Fluids um, will pass through without any restrictions. They will not stretch your stomach. Um, so just be sure to keep on sipping and reach your um, goals. And one last question for this slide. Can you try coffee at this time? So um, at this time, I mean, like you've, you're on phase two. Can you try coffee? or through any of the phases of the post-op diet. Okay, just a few more seconds. Okay, right, so a majority of you actually got it correct. So you cannot have coffee at this time. Also caffeine is dehydrating. You can have coffee 30 days post-op. Um, you can start having it occasionally, and into your daily routine, we recommend waiting two to three months. Now we will move on. So now at this point, um, days after surgery, make up to phase three. So on phase three, you should be introducing um, more solid foods or soft solid foods. So things like scrambled eggs, chicken, um, mashed or 
some vegetables would be fine. Um, everything should be soft enough to mash up with You should consume protein in all your meals. And it is really important to eat slowly and chew your food properly. And if you want to introduce just one new food uh, item to each meal or one new food at each meal, um, that way if something is you know, um, causing you some discomfort or pain, you know exactly what it is. For example, um, it's, let's say it's your first day of soft sausages, and you try scrambled eggs, and then a few, you know, a couple hours or you know, like 30 minutes, you start to feel unsettled, and you'll know exactly what it is, um, and you'll be like, oh, it was scrambled eggs that I had because I didn't have anything else. Um, and this phase, you want to start weighing your food to four ounces max, with protein being two to three ounces, fat being one tablespoon, and your carbs being one ounce. So this is the phase where if you didn't feel any restriction, you should start feeling restriction. You want to start reading labels. Um, and it's very common, I know we say weight your food to four ounces. It doesn't mean you have to eat all four of those ounces. Um, you just don't force yourself to eat more than it's comfortable to you and just kind of stop eating everything too uncomfortable or nauseous. Um, so you do want to chew all your food completely and slowly to applesauce consistency. You want to try to have three meals per day and one protein shake per day. But I know in the beginning it can be kind of difficult. So it is okay to have um, five to six smaller meals rather than three larger meals. And the protein intake recommendation is still 60 to 90 grams a day with um, your fluid recommendation still being 64 ounces. On here, we have a daily calorie intake of 1,000 to 1,500 calories. Um, but we I do recommend that you get at least a minimum of 800 calories because once you do start this week, that's usually where patients are at. And that's totally normal. That's uh, completely fine. And if you can't eat a lot, um, then you're only able to eat two ounces at a time. Just make sure that's protein um, as often as possible rather than um, something like mashed potatoes that doesn't have a lot of nutritional value in it. Um, and some things to try on the soft solids, um, it's cottage cheese, avocado, canned tuna with mayo or Greek yogurt. If you are gonna use mayo, I recommend, recommend using low fat mayo or Indian mayo. You can also have scallops, poached, scrambled eggs, salmon, braised beans, braised meats, as well as cooked fruit, vegetables, and soft tofu. Some things to avoid are vegetables, white bread, steak, popcorn, hot dogs, uh, cookies, sweet desserts, processed products, and snacks. You do want to make sure in your fish have fish you're in them. Um, still, we're still not eating baby food at this point. Um, and you do want to avoid any food that has nuts and seeds in it. Uh, those can get stuck in your staple lines. And the beginning of this phase is when you should start taking your vitamins because usually the phase begins at uh, uh, So you'll want to start taking your vitamins. And here we have some recipes for you. You can either take a picture of these or a screenshot. I'm just going to check all the comments to see if we have any questions. Okay, well, I guess we will move on. So after phase three, you'll move on to phase um, four, which is solid. So this will begin roughly around 21 days or later after surgery. Um, at this point, you should be able to eat more of a variety of food. Um, soft food should digest easily without any discomfort, and you can try firmer foods now, but you do still want to make sure you're chewing everything to applesauce consistency. Um, and just know that some foods can take a few months to become um, to be able to eat comfortably. And at this point, your long-term intake goal goes up to um, protein being three ounces, and fats being one to two tablespoons, and carbs being two ounces. Um, a little tip: if you're at any point in any phase, if you feel like 
you know, your liquid or your food is, um, it feels like it's getting stuck in your throat, just be sure that you're waiting 60 seconds between your sips. That can kind of help go away. Some common food triggers in the first three to four months um, are raw vegetables, scrambled eggs, uh, tough meat, chicken, white rice, um, regular pasta, untoasted bread slash white bread, as well as carbonated drinks and nuts. So now we'll go on to a scenario. So what is the scenario? Today's your first day on soft solids. You have not tried any soft solids yet. After your first meal, you decide to have a cheese and a poached egg topped with avocado. So what is wrong with this scenario? Um, and I see we have a question. Um, the question is, can you do canned chicken instead of tuna? Yes, you can do canned chicken instead of tuna. Okay, give you guys a few more seconds and then we'll end the poll question. Okay, so here are those results. So the problem here is that you tried three new foods at one time. So if you get sick, you're not gonna know exactly what caused you to get sick. Um, so then you might have to avoid all three things. Um, whereas if you try one new thing and it causes you to get sick, you'll know to just avoid that one. Another poll question. Okay. So what's wrong with this scenario? You're scrolling through Facebook. You see a patient that has great results. Um, and she tells you that she's been weightlifting since three weeks post up and you think to yourself, oh, that sounds kind of early. So you decide to ask um, Jen, her surgeon liaison, or me, Christina, the nutritionist, when um, you can start strength training and we both say eight weeks. So you listen to us and you hold off training until then. So what is wrong with this scenario? Okay, I'll give you guys a few more questions. I mean, a few more seconds. Um, okay, here are those results. So this is kind of a trick question because you, the patient in this scenario, did everything right, but the other patient, the one with the great weight loss that's results on Facebook, they started weightlifting way too early. Um, and you should avoid weight training until six to eight weeks, preferably eight weeks. Okay. And I saw we have another question that says, can you eat crackers with your tuna salad? So I don't recommend eating crackers um, until at least one month post-op and um, two months, because sometimes you know the hard food doesn't settle too well. So it's best to avoid that. Um, and you would want to go for like whole grain crackers, which usually have nuts or uh, seeds in them. So for that, I definitely recommend waiting um, until eight weeks post-op. Okay, so now we're going to go into your nutritional goals. Um, one month and beyond in a little sample meal plan. Um, so how much did you be eating once you one month out. So everyone tolerates a different range. Some people can only tolerate two ounces, others can tolerate around eight ounces after one year. Um, and it is normal to be able to eat a little bit more in volume as time passes. You do want to keep your meals between four to six ounces. Um, you can do this by using a food scale or measuring cups. Also don't force yourself to eat more than feels comfortable. Um, and just know that your stomach's not going to stretch from eating one specific food or eating too much one time. It's going to stretch if you're consistently overeating. So listen to your body um, and stop eating before you get uncomfortable or nauseous. Um, some random uh, signs that can tell you that you're full are um, hiccuping, a runny nose, sometimes even sneezing. So just kind of listen to your body and stop eating before um, you're full. Um, and then you get uncomfortable. So some nutrition um, goals 
Um, you want to focus on lean protein, healthy carbs, and um, healthy fats. So things like uh, avocados, olives, um, nuts, seeds, nut butters, um, olive oil, um, avocado oils. Those are all good options for healthy fats. For lean proteins, um, seafood, Greek yogurt, poultry, lean meats, cheese, eggs, tofu, those are all great options. For healthy carbs, um, you could do sweet potatoes, vegetables, fruit, beans and legumes, whole grains, oats, um, and Ezekiel bread. Um, Ezekiel bread is just kind of a sprouted grain bread. It has no flour or preservatives, preservatives, and it is easily digestible. Um, and it's high in protein and fiber. So for your long-term intake, we recommend 1,000 to 1,500 calories, with protein being 35% of those calories, carbs being 30 to 35%, fats being 35%, and then your sugar intake being less than 20 grams, and your fiber being over 20. Your fiber over 20 grams and your sugar less than 25. Um, and it is normal to not be able to eat this much um, at the one month mark. Um, this is kind of just a goal to work up towards. Um, and just remember that not one diet fits everyone, that once you know you do get a little bit further on in your uh, journey, you will probably have to readjust these goals because maybe um, you want to build a lot of muscle or um, you're exercising a lot, so these goals will probably have to get adjusted. And then some tips and tricks. Um, be sure to do your own research. Don't believe everything you see on um, Facebook groups or, or you know just randomly online. If you do have a question, um, you can post it on Facebook. Most likely, though, Sarita and I will have the most accurate answers. Um, or you can just directly reach out to me and I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. You wanna to try to prioritize your fluids, your protein, your healthy carbs, um, and just be kind of patient with your body, let yourself heal. Um, this is a major surgery. So be patient um, and wait six weeks before exercising. Make sure that you're keeping a positive mindset and healthy relationship with food. Just remember, it's not all about the scale. Um, Sometimes, you know, you might be losing inches, but the scale's not moving, so that can feel a little discouraging. That's why we recommend that you stay off the scale. Um, you can take measurements instead, and just think about the overall uh, health improvements that you'll be getting from having the surgery. And now we'll move on to vitamins. So it's important to set up your vitamins two weeks before surgery, and then you do want to start taking bariatric vitamins two days after surgery. So you might be thinking, well, why are vitamins important? Well, um, if you have deficiencies in vitamins, um, you can have things like fatigue, muscle and hair loss, or vision, nerve damage, cracked and dry skin, um, as well as and brittle bones. So, the American Society of Metabolic, um, Metabolic Bariatric Surgery came up with some guidelines for bariatric patients. Um, and I know this can seem like a lot of things that you need to take, but um, in the next slide, we'll kind of condense it down. But basically, they recommend you take a bariatric multivitamin, a thiamine, a zinc, a calcium citrate with vitamin D, and vitamin D. Um, iron with vitamin C and vitamin B12. So this kind of just condenses down into four vitamins instead of all um, instead of bullets. But your multivitamin will have enough zinc and thiamine in it as well as um, some vitamin D. Your calcium citrate supplement will also have some vitamin D. Um, you do want to make sure it's a citrate, not a carbonate, just because the citrate will be easier for your body to break down after surgery. You also should take an iron supplement with vitamin C. The vitamin C does help the iron absorb, so that's important. Uh, very important note to make here, do not take calcium and iron together. Those two should be taken at least two hours apart, um, just because they do compete for absorption, so you do want to take them at least two hours apart. And then you'll also want to take a B12. You can either do shots or you can do oral supplements. 
Um, so hair loss and other deficiencies can happen in the first few months due to rapid weight loss or lack of calories or um, protein, bad quality vitamins or misunderstanding of your vitamin schedule. Um, and just know that I'm more than happy to um, help you come up with a vitamin schedule that works for you. Um, you can always send me the vitamins that you got, kind of go through them and make um, a schedule. But this is a sample vitamin guide um, based on the Emerge Bariatric Vitamins. So if you were to do a chewable vitamin, you could do um, one scoop of the drinkable vitamin in the morning, one in the uh, one at night, and then also do an iron with vitamin C supplement during the day and a B12, and then two hours later, do the calcium citrate. For the chewable, you would have to do the bariatric multivitamin in the morning and um, evening, and then you could split up your calcium citrate throughout your day, and then um, somewhere in that slot, take iron with um, B12. And so I do highly recommend Emerge Bariatrics, and I recommend that you use the code ENJOY10%. Save 10% on your vitamins. Um, instead of getting all four of those, if you just get the chewable, so if you get this chewable, um, I'm not sure if you guys can see my cursor, but if you get the chewable multivitamin with iron, you only have to get another calcium supplement into it. And that would meet all your requirements. Um, but Emerge does have uh, Chewables, soft chew, and drinkable vitamins. Um, those are recommended for bariatric patients just because they are easier um, to absorb. Um, and if you had a restrictive procedure, you would need to take these vitamins um, for six to 12 months. So that's like the gastric sleeve. You could take bariatric vitamins for six to 12 months. If you had something that's a malabsorptive procedure, like the bypass or DNS, you would have to take these for the rest of your life. So Emerge also has soft chew. Um, you could also get all of these separately and get a multivitamin, an iron, a calcium, vitamin, and a B12 supplement. Emerge also has a drinkable vitamin. Um, some patients prefer this because you don't actually have to chew anything. You can use it. And it does also combine some of your calcium citrate in there. So you would be able to take this um, and then you'd all have to take an additional calcium and then iron, and then you'd be good to go. Uh, liquid vitamins do bypass the digestive process and are more easily absorbed into your bloodstream. Um, Emerge also has a high meal protein replacement. This is a great option for, um, for a protein powder. It does have 27 grams of complete protein. It has some calcium in there, it has some zinc and biotin. Um, and they do have less than five grams of sugar. And once again, you can use the code ENJOY10% to get 10% off. Um, and here we're gonna just compare just regular multivitamins, um, like the over-the-counter ones with the bariatric ones. And as you can see on your screen, um, for example, if we compare the thiamine, Emerge Bariatric has 12 milligrams, which is what we bariatric patients. The Centrium adult multivitamin has 1.5 milligrams, which is significantly less, and then the others have all. So, um, and also just regular vitamins usually have a lot of sugar in them. That's why we don't recommend you take them after surgery. Um, we don't recommend gummies because of the sugar content. And then I'll also talk about why we don't recommend patches. And then we also don't recommend Flintstone vitamins just because there's no thiamine in them, which is important for helping with nausea um, and vomiting after surgery. Um, there's not enough zinc. Vitamin D is too low, and it does have three grams of sugar. So as I said, we don't recommend the patches. Not all of your vitamins can be absorbed. And for example, B vitamins and B vitamins do not get absorbed. They are, and D, vitamin D deficiency is one of the more common deficiencies in bariatric patients. So that's just kind of why we don't recommend them. Also, there's not a lot of research done on how they 
the bariatric patients. So we just, uh, it's just better just to take a chewable, soft chew, or drinkable um, that will get easily absorbed. Okay, we also recommend a digestive enzyme. Um, I highly recommend this one because sometimes it will stop something um, because it, you know, it's not settling too well in your stomach. But this can help um, break down and digest your food. I've had people say that like sometimes they can't break down chicken. Um, and then they start taking a digestive enzyme and it gets better. Um, it can also help with nausea and um, increase absorption of nutrients. And then I do also recommend a probiotic for this one. You want to look for one. See if you have 50 million or higher. This kind of just helps to restore the balance of healthy bacteria in your body. Antibiotic. Um, it helps the immune system and it can help um, promote weight loss. And the option 12, two good brands are Align and Garden of Life. For the digestive enzyme, you really counter what um, patients like the papaya digestive enzyme so that's a great option um, for you um, now we're just going to check your knowledge um, which two vitamins can you take can you not take together so you cannot take these two together It looks like everyone's getting it right so far. Um, okay, so I'm gonna end the poll and here are those results. So every single person got it right. Um, calcium and iron, those two should be taken at least two hours apart because they do compete for absorption. Our next question, why are probiotics recommended? Okay, so I'm going to end the poll and hear those results. And every single person got it correct again. Um, they help your digestion and help create that good healthy balance um, to keep you regular and support your weight loss as well as with um, help with B12 absorption. Okay, um, and one last question or last poll question for this webinar. Uh, will over-the-counter vitamins be sufficient? Okay, just a few more seconds. Okay, so here are those results. 94% said no, which is the correct answer. They will not provide you with enough adequate for um, the bariatric patient to prevent nutritional deficiencies. And now before I start answering your questions, I do want to mention our podcast that we have about. It's called Can You Stomach This? It's available on basically every single um, podcast streaming platform. Um, it's done by two of our past patients, Rena and Sarita, and you kind of just get their perspective on having surgery um, with Mexico Bariatric Center. Um, some examples of episodes they have out are post-op diet, exercising after weight loss surgery, fast food and returning to work. Um, and they have been posting new ones um, every Friday recently. So I highly recommend you go check them out. Um, and they're just kind of a fun podcast to listen to. Um, also, we have a lot of resources on our um, website. We have a lot of great blogs that are just informational for bariatric patients. Um, so I highly recommend checking that out. We have a YouTube channel. We have support groups. We have an Instagram and we have a TikTok where we try to post things regularly. So um, go follow us on that and, and check out the content we have there. 
Um, and for those of you who may be joining me and didn't catch my name, my name is Christina. I'm a nutritionist here. I've been and my contact info is on the bottom of your screen. My email address is just nutrition at mexicobariatriccenter.com. And my direct line, you can call me or text me there. Um, you can see pictures there is uh, 916-758-2745. Um, and now we'll just start with your questions. Um, so Lisa wants to know what about baby food. Um, you cannot have baby food um, post-op just because Usually does have a lot of sugar, um, and it does not have enough nutritional information or nutritional content for a for an adult. So weightlifting would be anything over um, 15 pounds after surgery. Just nothing too strenuous. If you once you do start working out, um, if anything, just you know feels uncomfortable or starts to feel like. So just, you know, maybe just wait another week before you start going for it. Um, yes, all of this um, information is available on the website, which reminds me, I do have some links that I would like to send out to you guys. Um, first will be, um, and this will all be in the comments, or actually, um, I'm not sure if you can put it in the chat box. I don't think you guys can see it. So I'm just going to reply to that comment that says, is all of this on the website. So I'm gonna include the link for a printable PDF. Um, it has some great sample meal plans in there and it also has all of this written out. I'll also um, post a link to some breakfast recipes, some dinner recipes, and then the magic weight loss soup. For the breakfast um, and dinner recipes, you just wanna check on the timeline. Um, at the bottom of each recipe, it will tell you when you can have it posted. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so I responded to that. You guys should be able to get those links. Let me also just post them in the Facebook live chat. Okay. Uh, Jennifer wanted to know what brand is an example of a digestive enzyme. I don't have a specific brand name, um, but just like an over-the-counter one works well. Um, something like a papaya enzyme would be great. Um, in phase three, does rotisserie chicken need to be put through the food processor, processor or is pulled okay providing a change of consistency? So in phase three, you don't have to blend anything or put anything through the food processor. Um, pulled is okay. You just want to be able to, you want to be sure that you're chewing everything to applesauce consistency. Um, yes, you can have um, salt. On, this, on the post-op diet, you can add it. Um, so when you say nutritional needs after six months, I'm assuming you're referring to um, the vitamins. So if you have a restrictive procedure, like the gastric sleeve, you can switch over. You can switch over to um, just over-counter vitamins, not, not a gummy though, um, but something that is a function. But if you have a malabsorptive, malabsorptive procedure, you should continue to use bariatric vitamins. Yes, you can begin to add, um, incorporate hot sauce into your diet. I do recommend going slow because your stomach is really sensitive after surgery. Um, for B12, you need to take, if you're doing, you need to take about 500. To a thousand, um, I think it's like micro milligrams, micro something units. Um, I can go back to that slide so you can see for sure. Um, go. So, depending on what your goals are, um, your calorie slash macro count after six months, uh, if you're not exercising a ton, or, um, yeah, if you're not exercising, you can continue to stick to those macros of the 1,000 to 1,500 range. Um, when, can, when can we have alcohol and wine? You can have alcohol and wine six months post-op. 
Um, you can buy the Emerge vitamins at emergebariatrics.com. I put that up on the screen. You can also use the promo code for that. Um, and if you do want to simplify, I highly recommend um, the complete multivitamin with iron and any of the calcium citrate options that we have. Okay. Are there any more questions? Or maybe there's a slide that you'd like me to go back to go over because I need to know sometimes I go kind of quickly. Um, but it's just because I tried to leave time at the end for questions. Um, but just let me go back to it. For greatest ease, I recommend, um, I can't even show you guys since we have some time. So if you go to emergebariatrics.com, you can do um, shop all vitamins. And then, so we have a ton of different options. Um, you could either do, so you could actually either do this chewable multivitamin. This is what I do. So this um, bariatric multivitamin with iron in the tropical flavor um, that is the only flavor. Uh, so you could do this one. And then if you go to shop all vitamins again, you can scroll down until you see the calcium citrate. So you could either do either do this one or you could do this one. So this one is the berries and cream, so it's a chewable, so you can do this one. Or you can do this um, soft chew, which comes in watermelon and car in caramel. Um, let me see if I can actually send all of these to you as well in the chat. It's the capsules. Um, I am trying to make it a bundle um, just so that way, like in the future, it will be ordered the multivitamin with iron and the calcium citrate. Um, do this. So I'm doing multivitamin. Um, but you will have to take these at least two hours apart. Since the multivitamin will have your iron needs. Um, and then calcium. There are calcium supplements. And I think anyone can see these, look through the answered questions. I believe they should pop up. So you can either do the chewable or soft chew for your calcium. See, I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, someone said, what about for the powders? Uh, are you referring to the Emerge powders? I'm going to assume you're referring to those. So those are also on EmergeBariatrics.com. They do meet the requirements for protein shakes just because they do have, um, and I sent the link to you in the reply to the question. They do have all of your, um, they do have at least 20 grams of protein and less than 100 grams of sugar. Um, yeah. Any other questions? And I'll send all of these in the on the Facebook side as well. So I did recommend an iron plus C um, plus a B12. But if you get this combination, so if you get the, um, the chewable complete multivitamin with iron, uh, that will have enough of your B12. That's why I think this is the easiest combo because you 
basically condensing all four of those um, into two vitamins. Any other questions? So um, the de delivery with Emerge is actually pretty quick. Um, usually. Um, you can build the order in 24 hours, and that's usually when it gets shipped. So it's pretty quick. Um, so my alternative for patients in um, Canada who can't get my um, would be to see if you can find some on Amazon. Or um, this brand, Berry Life, I'll send you guys the link. I believe they also um, ship to Canada. Elisa says so on their website. They have a duo as well. It's just um, this one. So this one. And I'll send you guys the link. So it has a multivitamin with iron and calcium. So if you were to take those two, you would basically take them, you could take your multivitamin in the morning and then two hours later, you have to take um, a calcium supplement. And then a few hours after that, you could take another calcium and then a few hours after that, you can take another calcium and that would be all your requirements. Just because it is best to split up that calcium throughout your day. So basically, if we were to look at the sample chart, would, if you, you would be following this guideline. So you could cross out the 12 p.m. slot with the iron supplement and the very bottom multivitamin because you would just have all of that in the morning. Yes, so the multivitamin in the AM and then the three calcium three times a day, several hours apart. Yep. I do have a link for the drinkable. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to paste it into the answer thingy. Okay, any other questions before we go? Okay, well, I do want to say thank you to all of you who joined. Oh, there's another question. Um, unfortunately, at this time, there are no other flavors for the drink pool, um, but hopefully in the future, we will get some more. Okay, well, um, thank you everyone for joining my webinar. I hope this was informational. If you do have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.